All right, thanks everyone for joining me. This is Katie Wallace, and tonight I'm presenting on natural supplements versus coronavirus. And I'll have some time for questions at the end. So if you would like to submit a question while I'm going through the presentation, feel free to do that through the chat, uh, which is a button available It's somewhere on your screen. I'm kind of new to Zoom, but um, and I will um, present those questions at the end. So here we go. Uh, here I think I go. Here we go. Okay. So uh, before I start, I just want to emphasize that I'm a non-medical practitioner and this information is for educational purposes only. What we're going to talk about tonight is the life cycle of a virus and the characteristics unique to this virus, the coronavirus that's on all of our minds, and then natural ways to maximize the immune system, kind of keeping in mind uh, what the life cycle of this virus is. So I'm going to talk about natural supplements. I'm also going to talk about things you can do with your diet and why natural light is important to really maximize the immune system right now. So the immune, so this is a diagram of how most viruses work. So there's two major types of viruses. There's DNA viruses and RNA viruses. And the coronavirus is an RNA virus. And so this just shows you its life cycle. First, it enters a cell in our bodies, and then it takes over the nucleus, and then it replicates itself. It makes more copies of itself, and then it releases those copies. It makes the cell open up so that more viral particles leave the cell, searching for other cells in the body, and in many cases, this causes our cells to die. So that's the basic life cycle and I want to bring this up because later I'm going to talk about how the different natural remedies affect this life cycle and therefore are effective for us in supporting our immune systems. For the coronavirus specifically, there are two major stages to think about, two major stages in terms of immune system activity. So on the left, we have an early stage where you see primarily activated T cells. So T cells are the first type of immune cells that are activated when our body is first basically identifying the virus. And then in the severe stage on the right, things get much more complicated. We see different types of white blood cells, neutrophils, monocytes. These are just names for different types of white blood cells. But they're, they do something that's pretty important to understand, which is they generate something called a cytokine storm. And a cytokine storm is just a flood of inflammatory chemicals from the immune system. So it's like the immune system gets so aggravated by the virus in the severe stage uh, that there's lots of inflammation uh, and it just keep, kind of keeps coming. And this is where we see a very severe respiratory stage with this virus. So we don't wanna to get to this severe stage if we can. So number one to think about would be, let's uh, make sure that the body has a strong early stage and lots of support for the early stage so that we can do a good job of identifying and marking that virus um, and we're much less likely to get into the severe stage. But if we do get into the severe stage, there are a number of things that we can do to help um, reduce the level of inflammation that can happen in the body, particularly in the lungs, and reduce that cytokine storm. So I want to first talk about just some basic immune foundation pieces in terms of natural remedies. And this transfer factor product is one of my new favorites. Um, it basically is a blend of different ingredients that really help the body with 
meeting a virus right away in the beginning. It's increasing our natural killer cells, which are very active in the beginning. And it has something called transfer factor in it, which is a type of protein in our immune system that we use to identify things, particularly viruses. And this blend also has some other things like zinc, uh, astragalus, shiitake, uh, other mushrooms, beta-glucans, other things. So it's, a, it's kind of a nice blend, but this is a good supplement to be thinking about because it's safe for everybody. Um, it's safe for children to take, and it is going to do a really good job of just making sure that the immune system is ready. Vitamin D is the next thing I want to talk about. Uh, it's just so important for our immune system. It, it naturally helps us fight viruses. It, studies have shown that it helps keep our lungs healthy. Uh, one of the ways that we protect ourselves from viruses is through barriers or boundaries between ourselves and you know, the environment around us. So obviously our skin is a boundary, but the other boundary is our um, lining through our entire digestive system, all our mucosal lining. And so vitamin D is really critical to keeping that mucosal lining healthy. Uh, there are some other things that help with keeping the mucosal lining healthy too, like avoiding gluten. And I'll talk about that a little later. Uh, but we know vitamin D is really important for keeping our barrier strong. Uh, and so that way it protects us from viruses. It also does something called modulating the immune system. So that means that we're less likely to get into an out of control cytokine storm, which can happen in that severe stage of the coronavirus. And this slide is just covering that we know from some of the studies that have been done that vitamin D deficiencies do contribute to the development of more acute respiratory issues with a virus like this and that a vitamin D level below 50 may predispose someone to a more serious respiratory issue like a viral pneumonia. Um, and we also know when people are low in vitamin D or um, below 50 that, that we can experience greater injury to our lungs if we do get an infection. So vitamin D is very important. Uh, here's another slide talking about how vitamin D protects that gut lining. And it seems to help with the expression of the proteins that keep the lining strong. So the mucosal lining all through the digestive tract. And vitamin D also helps improve the number of good bacteria we've got, which is another kind of barrier between um, us and nature. And when we have more good bacteria, we're less likely uh, to let a virus develop into a respiratory infection. And I mentioned that vitamin D is an immune modulator. I wanna explain that a little bit more here. Uh, vitamin A is also important and both of these vitamins are fat soluble. So I wanna emphasize I'm talking about fat soluble vitamin A, which is different from beta carotene, which is what's found in carrots. Uh, you, can, you can eat a lot of carrots, but you can only convert so much to, to the fat soluble vitamin A that your immune system really needs. So it can be important to look for either food-based sources of vitamin A or, um, or taking a, a fat-based um, fat vitamin A. And that'll typically be called uh, vitamin A palmitate. Um, so anyway, uh, these are good um, immune modulators. So I have a picture of my children here on the left. This is an example of an immune system undergoing a cytokine storm, okay? So the immune system sees something, and it is just going bonkers. It's gonna tear down the curtains. It's gonna be bouncing off the wall. It's gonna create a lot of inflammation. Versus on the right, you see my well-behaved children with their grandmother. The grandma here is acting like an immune modulator. She's you know, helping them to behave well, to only target things that really need to be targeted. And so the, this is the difference between a out of control immune system and one that's modulated. So vitamin A and vitamin D and other natural substances help our immune system to be better behaved. And so that can really help us in a severe stage of, of, a, of a viral infection. 
There's a lot of different options out there for vitamin D supplementation. These are some of my favorites. Uh, Ultra D here on the left is, is a favorite because it's got vitamin A in it. It's also in fish oil. So it's a nice combination supplement. And it also has vitamin K. So vitamin A and vitamin K are cofactors for vitamin D and help, um, help it to function better in the body. Um, but in a situation like this, uh, you know, capsules are fine. You'll see that the dosages here are fairly high, maybe depend on who you're talking to, uh, 5,000 IU to 10,000 IU. Um, typically, you would want to know what your level of vitamin D is in your blood and then determine the level that you take from there. Uh, if you don't know, then I would say taking uh, 1,000 to 5,000 IUs daily is fairly safe for most people. Certainly, if you develop symptoms of a cold or were around people um, who are exposed to the coronavirus, you could you could certainly take five to ten thousand units daily, very safely for um, a short period of time. But but going and asking for that vitamin D test is is a really good thing to do for your health. Um, there's so many benefits to vitamin D. Actually, the next webinar I do. I'm going to talk all about vitamin D. So you'll get a lot more information if you want to join me. That's in three weeks. And I'll be sending out um, some notices about that. The next thing I want to talk about is selenium. Selenium is a mineral. Most people haven't, it's not really on their radar, but um, there have been a number of, uh, of studies on selenium and its importance for the immune system. And one study actually showed that. Um, that lab animals who had good levels of selenium were less likely to get infected by RNA viruses. So remember, the coronavirus is an RNA virus, so some of this information is applicable. Um, animals with low levels of selenium were more easily infected, and then the virus in, in the body of those animals that had low levels of selenium the virus was much more likely to mutate into pathogenic strains. Um, so selenium can be really helpful. I like this product here that's shown on the screen, made by now. It's NAC with selenium. So it's a nice combination, um, has healthy levels of, of selenium. I think there's um, 60 micrograms in a dosage here. So that's a pretty good level if you're wondering how much selenium to take right now. Um, some people say you shouldn't take more than 200 micrograms of selenium a day. So you'd be well within it with a product like this. And you could certainly take selenium for you know a three to six month period uh, without knowing your levels. If you're taking this, you're not under the direction of a practitioner. Um, so it's pretty safe to take if it's something you want to kind of have in your arsenal right now. N-acetylcysteine um, is abbreviated NAC, and this is a supplement that's naturally antiviral. It's, it's a natural um, antioxidant. Um, we use it particularly in our liver, um, but it can be used around the body, and it's been used in studies with H1N1 virus, which, um, you know, had a, a very similar presentation with a lot of acute respiratory stress. Um, so there were studies with NAC showing that it was very effective against H1N1, and that's, I think, a similar situation to what we're in now. Um, NAC also, among its many, many benefits, um, is anti-mucolytic, which means that it helps thin mu mucus, so it's also just really good for the lungs. So an overall really good supplement, very safe to take, many benefits, um, too many probably to go in this presentation. So I'm going to keep moving. And I, I would also like to have another disclaimer that, you know, there's a lot of good supplements out there to choose from. So I'm not going to talk about them all tonight. I just tried to whittle it down to some top picks so that it wouldn't be too boring. Um, and so for this section where we're just still talking about immune foundation, Zinc is very important. Zinc can help uh, shorten the duration of a viral issue for people and also can help the immune system to stop the replication of the virus. 
Uh, I like this one because it's food-based, the standard process. Um, sometimes zinc upsets people's stomach when they take it, so taking it with food can help with that. You need to have strong stomach acid to be able to break the zinc down, so that's probably what's happening if you're getting really nauseous. Uh, if you can tolerate it, you can take like a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and a glass of water um, with that same meal or make a salad dressing that's got, you know, um, vinegar or lemon juice, something that stimulates stomach acid. And that, that can help with digesting the zinc and not getting that upset stomach. Also, probiotics, I already mentioned earlier, are pretty critical and seem to help um, keep symptoms to be more at a mild level for people and, and, and even in studies with children, probiotics prevent viruses from becoming um, infections. This one I've, I've picked for tonight because it's an ENT pro lozenge. So it's designed for the ear, nose and throat. And for many people, the first stages of the coronavirus, they've got a sore throat. And so it can be helpful to get the good beneficial strains of bacteria up in um, those upper airways. Um, and, and in the um, in the mouth, and this is a lozenge, so you just kind of suck on it until it dissolves. Uh, so that's just an example of a of a nice probiotic for the situation. So to summarize the first section of the program we've gone through so far, I like the transfer factor because it's a really good supplement for mobilizing the immune system to be ready in the early stage of um, of coronaviruses. And then uh, we've got vitamin D, uh, talked about the dosage of that, but vitamin D and vitamin A are fat soluble. So if you're taking these vitamins, it's helpful to take them with some fat. So eggs or you know, butter or you know, whatever fat, avocados you've got in your diet. Um, for many people, if they're taking a good multivitamin, like I like the alpha base, then they're getting vitamin A and you don't necessarily need to add it in. So that's one way you can can get the vitamin A you need. And oftentimes there's uh, vitamin C in a multi as well. And then the NAC with selenium, you know, two capsules a day is a maintenance level. If you were to get symptoms like um, that you're coming down with a cold, uh, then you could increase that to um, four or even six capsules a day. And a, similar with the zinc, maybe you're taking just one a day for maintenance. Uh, at the first sign of symptoms, I uh, would be um, increasing that even up to six a day if you want, and that can be really helpful at the beginning. Uh, and then a probiotic, you know, once a day uh, for maintenance, and then obviously increasing it at the first sign of symptoms would be a uh, suggestion. Okay, so we already saw this, but I just want to remind you because I'm going to talk about this a little more in the next phase here. This next uh, section of the talk, we're going to talk more specifically, not about foundational things, but about supplements that specifically can help target something like the coronavirus. So lactoferrin is a milk protein, so it's just made from a food source. And it is really good at creating uh, what's called a glycoprotein, which is just a protein on the outside of our cells so that viruses can't get in. Um, and the studies that have been done show that taking 500 milligrams have been effective against other coronaviruses. So that would be a dosage you'd want to maybe start from. Um, five milligrams a day, I would recommend if you had symptoms five milligrams three times a day just to get good coverage. There's really no side effects to taking the lactoferrin, assuming that you can tolerate the dairy base of it, which is fairly minimal, but something to recognize if you have a dairy allergy, then this is probably not the product for you. Um, it's also been shown to help reduce inflammation in the lungs, so it's helping us at that early stage and the um, later stages of uh, a virus. If you are sensitive to dairy, then IAG would be a product that would be a great alternative. It acts very similarly to the lactoferrin, where it creates that glycoprotein and stops the virus from attaching and getting into your cells. It also is good at boosting natural killer 
uh, cell activity like the, the transfer factor. And this is a powder. So um, you take this powder in water, basic uh, dose would be a teaspoon daily. If you have a cold or a virus, then you can increase it up to a tablespoon in water daily. And this is very safe for both kids and adults as well. It, pretty much everything I'm talking about, you can give to kids. Um, maybe kids under two, you might wanna reach out to me because um, sometimes there are sensitive versions of these more available. I might use more caution with a child under the age of two, but otherwise these are all very safe. Quercetin is getting a lot of attention um, in terms of its effectiveness against the coronavirus. And it basically uh, has been shown in studies to stop, again, the entrance of the virus into the cell. And it also seems to inhibit the process where the virus um, makes copies of itself. Um, so that's, that's really helpful. I like quercetin in this product called Natural Dehist because not only does it have quercetin in a form that's really easy to absorb, that's one thing you need to keep an eye on, get a high quality quercetin, because um, some of the quercetin products out there might be harder to absorb. It also has nettles, stinging nettle, which is a herbal um, from a plant, and nettles have been shown to um, be effective against coronaviruses. Um, and it's got the NAC, the N-acetylcysteine that I just talked about. So getting a little more NAC isn't going to hurt at all. Um, and uh, so this, this is a capsule, and you could start with a, a couple capsules um, a day, and then at the first sign of symptoms, ramp this up. This actually happens to be my favorite formula for allergies, too. So you could have it around just to help with reducing symptoms of allergies uh, in the in the spring here, and then use it if you, if you do have signs that you're getting a virus. Resveratrol is another wonderful herb. Uh, this is a, um, derived from a number of different plants. It's found in red wine, so you might have read about it there. This is a picture of Japanese knotweed, which um, here in the Dane County area of Wisconsin is an invasive. Um, but this is a, a herb that just has so many benefits and not many contraindications. So it's really good for everybody to take because of its anti-inflammatory benefits. But it does really help in the beginning when we're trying to ramp up the body's um, <clears throat> response to a virus. And um, it does seem to reduce the ability of the virus to replicate. And it's an antioxidant, so it's also helping in the severe stages of um, a virus like the coronavirus. Um, it's an immune modulator, just like vitamin D. Um, resveratrol, I kind of think of as being a lot like turmeric. Um, so some of you, most of you listening are probably familiar with turmeric. So it's got a lot of the same benefits and the two together are just like a dynamo team to help reduce inflammation. <clears throat> and it doesn't get its own slide in this talk, but Turmeric's another good um, supplement to be taking right now because it's um, anti-inflammatory and supportive of lung health. So you can't go wrong with turmeric either. So just to remind you again of this, um, this slide here where we, we have the, the early stage where we're just trying to activate the T cells and the natural killer cells. Um, and then the more severe stage where we've got this cytokine storm uh, this is where we don't want to go, and if we do get to the severe stage, this is what we're working on. Uh, this cytokine storm is going to create a lot of oxidation, and so in order to control this, you need, you need antioxidants. So enter glutathione. Glutathione is the, the most abundant antioxidant in our bodies, uh, so we, we make it naturally, but when we are exposed to different stressors like a virus, it can rapidly deplete our glutathione stores if we're not um, either able to recycle or uh, produce more. Um, so actually healthy people have a lot of glutathione in the lungs. Most people who know about glutathione think of it as just being in the liver, but actually there's a lot in the lungs. Um, and that, so providing glutathione in a supplemental form can help a lot with um, 
the fatigue that comes with having a virus like the coronavirus, um, and also help with reducing the the rapid cell death and oxidation that that's happening. So um, so glutathione can really help in the severe stage when people are having difficulty breathing and feeling very depleted. It's fine to take glutathione throughout, it, even in the beginning, um, but I particularly think of it as, um, you know, somebody does um, not just have a mild cold, but they start to develop some of the symptoms of problems breathing, then, um, then this one can be very important. It also includes vitamin C, which of course is another really powerful antioxidant in the body. So you can't go wrong with taking vitamin C also. Molecular hydrogen is one of the last things I'm going to talk about. Um, and it's actually being used in some hospitals um, to, to treat people with the coronavirus. And it really does help alleviate the symptoms of difficult breathing very astonishingly quickly. I've been working with um, some clients here in Madison and suggesting this product and just seeing really great results uh, when people are, are beginning to see that they're, they're starting to struggle um, in their airways. So this form of it is something you can buy over the counter. Again, it's very safe. Anybody can take this product. There's no contraindication. And uh, the typical dosage would be two tablets. It's a little tablet. Take one tablet at a time and it just dissolves in a glass of water. And then the, the hydrogen is a really powerful antioxidant. So that's how it's really helping in the lung cells um, to continue to help those cells to function uh, without that um, kind of spiraling effect of the cytokine storm and the cell death um, that can occur. So it's really going to rapidly reduce the inflammation in the lungs. And you can go up um, to more, more than two. I had a lady who took this last week and she took five on the first day. And by the second day, she was feeling better than she'd felt in three weeks. So it really did turn the situation for her around very quickly. Um, and these supplements are all, uh, Research Nutritionals is a professional grade supplement. So I've got it on my web store, which I'll post at the end of the talk if you wanna look it up um, and, and check it out a little bit more, but it's available to buy online. So um, sometimes some additional herbal support for lungs is good. I like Herbalist and Alchemist. They're a, a producer of good herbal remedies and they have some lung formulas. So if somebody was starting to have mucus in the lungs and or trouble breathing, um, the Lung Relief Cold Dam formula has things like ginger and thyme and elecampane, all really good herbs for the airways. And I also am a big favorite of combining echinacea with pork root for lung health and just for general antiviral support. Pork root's um, really good for chronic infections and also really good to take in the beginning to help mobilize the immune system to meet the virus. Um, but it should be taken very cautiously because high doses of pork root are poisonous. So I would not advise taking more than 10 drops a day unless you're under the advice of a practitioner. And if you take too much, you'll get loose stools. So that'll kind of be a sign that you need to back off a little bit if your body, um, if your body has that result. So, so typically you might just start with a few drops um, in a cup of tea with, you know, with the echinacea, you could do two or three dropper pulls. You, you wanna do lots and lots of echinacea if you're using echinacea medicinally. So a couple dropperfuls of the echinacea with um, maybe just two drops of the poke. Um, and that can help. One of the things that's happening with the coronavirus for some people is it tends to linger and people are, you know, they get better, but then their fever comes back and their symptoms come back. So that's a nice situation to use the poke when it seems like um, your, bo your body's needing more help. You're past the the um, initial phases. Um, although if, if, like I said, you certainly could take poke in the beginning, but um, I usually think of using it when there's a clear sign that the body, you know, isn't resolving the infection and needs more help. 
Okay, so to summarize the supplements that, you know, I might think of these less of a foundation, although they certainly could be a part of a foundation for somebody who was at higher risk or just <clears throat> wanted the peace of mind of having a little more support. Um, but for most people, most you know, healthy people, maybe you'd only start thinking of taking these at the, at the first sign of symptoms, unless you're an individual who um, you know, is at getting higher exposure to the virus or something like that. So the lactoferrin or the IAG, those would be taken away from food a few times a day. The natural dehist, um, again, a few times a day with or without food. Resveratrol is just one version of resveratrol that I like. It's a capsule. Um, I would dose that at three times a day too if, if somebody had viral symptoms. The trifortified glutathione is a supplemental form of the glutathione that's um, it's pretty accessible. It's either orange or watermelon flavor, so you can use it with kids, and you could start with a teaspoon and go up to two daily. The H2 absorbed, I already talked about. Two time, two uh, tablets daily would be, um, you know, your starting level, and then you could always increase um, to more than that. And then if you're doing some kind of um, herbal support, you're probably doing that a few times a day. So the strong immune foundation, of course, includes getting those key nutrients, vitamins, minerals, different botanicals. I just talked about all those things are really good, but there's some other things that I think are, are also really important. So make, making sure you're getting enough rest. Most adults need eight to 10 hours of sleep, although of course that's gonna vary for the individual. And you wanna keep getting movement, exercise. You need blood. Your, your blood that moves in your body and circulates when you exercise is the most healing thing we have. <laughs> so it's your blood that's doing the work. Um, and so you wanna make sure that you're you know, continuing to exercise in a way that's, that works for you. Uh, as far as food goes, you wanna be eating as many nourishing foods as, as you can and have access to. Uh, the studies that have been done with diets and different viruses show that a keto or a ketogenic diet, which is a fat-based fat diet, or um, intermittent fasting, which is where you have a longer period of fasting between supper and your first meal the next day, these help reduce something called mTOR, which, ha which is um, something we naturally have in our cells, but as the virus is replicating inside our cells, it can hijack mTOR, and um, that helps the virus to continue to make copies of itself. And so what we know from studies is that a ketogenic diet or an intermittent fasting-based diet help keep mTOR at a healthy level and so therefore help reduce viral infections. So um, I have a whole other lecture on the ketogenic diet. Maybe if this webinar is well received, we'll do some more and I can, I can talk to you more about how you might approach a ketogenic diet, and I'd love to do a program on intermittent fasting also, but there's a lot available on, you know, out there, there's a lot of good books, and I'm here as a resource for you too, if you have questions. Uh, if, um, you know, maybe you're just in the beginning of your journey to upgrade your diet, then the key things I would be thinking about would be um, gluten-free. Uh, so gluten is a food we know from studies, it's it's one of the proteins found in grains like wheat and barley, and uh, gluten will open up our gut barrier. Um, this has been demonstrated in a number of studies. So if you just eat bread or some other form of gluten once a week, that's enough to keep your barrier constantly open. So when we're going back to thinking about our first barrier to viruses, then eliminating foods like gluten um, makes a lot of sense for that. Um, eliminating dairy can also be really beneficial because dairy can be a congesting food, so it could be helpful to our airways to reduce our dependence on dairy right now. And obviously, eliminating sugar is always a good move. Um, sugar makes us produce insulin, and increased levels of insulin drive inflammation, which is what drives that cytokine storm and that kind of spiral of inflammation that can happen in the um, 
severe stage of the coronavirus. So, so working on reducing sugar um, is important also. Oh, this is just a picture of um, the gut lining because I was talking about how gluten opens our barrier. So this is a microscopic picture of our barrier. You can see the healthy gut on the right. One of the problems with wheat in our culture is that it's all sprayed with glyphosate, which is Roundup, which is a, a pesticide. Um, so it's all sprayed before it's harvested. And so when we eat the wheat or other non-organic foods, uh, you can see what happens to the barrier on the right. There's all those holes and all the uh, in between the cells and all the gut cells are shrunken. Uh, so I just thought it might be nice to see a visual of that. So that's eliminating wheat is one good way to get um, the glyphosate, reduce the glyphosate in your diet. Uh, but gluten itself also has a similar effect um, to the glyphosate shown here in terms of opening up that barrier, potentially making us more vulnerable to the viruses that we're naturally going to come in contact with. And the last thing I want to talk about has to do with light, uh, because our melatonin levels actually seem to be um, fairly critical in our experience with the coronavirus and whether or not we have a, um, a mild experience or a more severe one. Uh, so it's very important for us to get enough healthy light. Obviously, we, we make vitamin D when we get enough sunlight, although um, in, in Wisconsin, we cannot make vitamin D between November and April. Um, no matter how much you go outside, you can't. And if you wear sunscreen, um, you're not able to make vitamin D either because you have to get the, the ultraviolet rays in order to make vitamin D. Uh, but the sunlight has other benefits for us just besides vitamin D. Um, and most of us spend the majority of our time inside um, exposed to blue light, like from our computers right now. We are receiving um, a greater abundance of blue light than other ends of the spectrum. And the LED lights that perhaps are on above us or around us in lamps, those are all artificial blue light. The same with the cell phone. Um, and so there's a lot of problems with artificial blue light. It seems to uh, suppress our melatonin production. And so with the coronavirus, that can be very important. Uh, melatonin is a hormone that we make uh, when we are exposed to natural light. Uh, and melatonin seems to promote a very strong initial response to viral infection. So if we're talking about our early stages, um, melatonin is very important. Melatonin also helps control the inflammation that we experience perhaps in the, in the later or the more severe stages of a coronavirus. And melatonin is naturally very high in children and decreases with age. So some scientists are speculating that perhaps melatonin is one of the key factors in terms of why kids are not uh, vulnerable to the coronavirus or not, you know, it's not really developing into severe stages for um, the vast majority of kids and, um, and why elderly people seem um, more predisposed. So you can boost your melatonin naturally if you get more natural light, uh, get more of the red end of the light spectrum. I'm going to talk about that in a second. And uh, if you block the blue light, say if you're working at a computer all day or you're inside all day, you can do some simple things to help block your blue light and that in and of itself will help your body to make higher levels of melatonin. So yes, there are melatonin supplements and certainly you could take those, um, but uh, you can also just boost your body's melatonin production naturally. And that's probably, uh, you know, if, it, if that's feasible for you, eventually you're, you're gonna get better benefits from then just taking a supplement for it. So, um, all the smartphones have blue light blockers on them in the settings, so it's a good idea if you haven't turned that on to check that out and turn that on. Here's a picture of me. You can see my blue blocker glasses. They've got a yellow tint. And so um, this helps me to make more melatonin even when I'm sitting in front of the computer. Um, 
and you can get a blue blocker app on your computer and you can also use incandescent lights at home. All of those things help improve your light environment. And there's many more benefits besides just melatonin to that. So if you um, listen in to my vitamin D webinar in a few weeks, we'll talk more about the blue light. Uh, this is a lamp that you can get that helps boost melatonin production. It's a near infrared light bulb. It's only $10. You can get it on saunaspace.com. If you buy a light bulb like this, you should make sure that you get an appropriate heat lamp for it because it's not a normal type of bulb and it does need a special lamp that can handle the heat. And you can use this light for about 20 minutes a day just to start. And this really does have so many benefits, but one of them being um, helping with your melatonin production, which can help with sleeping and hormones, balancing weight, reducing inflammation, improving mitochondrial activity uh, in all the cells. So many benefits here. This is a picture of the setup I have. I uh, just read under this red light at night. So we made it to the end. And um, I wanted to mention that I do have a number of these supplements um, on my website. I actually did put together a general immune kit and then an antiviral kit. Uh, so you, you can go to my website if you're interested. And you, you can find the other things that I talked about there too, the transfer factor and the H2 absorb. And um, I hope that you'll join me in a few weeks. I'm going to be talking more about vitamin D then. And so uh, if anybody has any questions, if you want to type them into the chat, I'll be happy to um, look at that. But it doesn't look like anybody has any questions. So Everybody's saying hi. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Oh, somebody does have a question. Okay. Hang on just a moment. Do you want to type your question in? Oh, do, the question is, do warm bulbs that are LED make a difference? Hmm. I don't know the answer to that. That's a good question. I'll have to look up that answer and email you. Yeah. Oh, somebody, the next question is somebody's asking about infrared sauna. So yeah, infrared sauna, um, can, has many, many benefits because the infrared heat actually helps to mobilize the lymphocytes. So that can be helpful when you're fighting a virus. So absolutely, if you've got access to an infrared sauna, you'd be doing it every day if you can. Um, the infrared is basically heat, the heat end of the spectrum. And so I do think that it's helpful when you're working with these different lights um, or different pieces of the spectrum uh, to kind of have a layering effect. So if you've got an infrared sauna and you can add a near infrared light bulb or um, red LED lights, um, which are very different from the regular um, LED light bulbs, which are mostly blue, um, those are all very therapeutic. So infrared sauna, near infrared lights, even red LED, um, is really beneficial. It's the blue light LED that can be harmful if we're exposed to it too much. Do I suggest increase an increase in certain foods uh, for health during this time? Yeah, um, you know, so besides a ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting, um, you know, a ketogenic diet is going to emphasize healthy fats and uh, low carb vegetables. So it's always good to eat more uh, beneficial vegetables in general for most people. Protein is very important for the immune system. So keep those good proteins from wild fish, grass fed meat coming. 
Certainly uh, garlic and onions are, um, have natural antiviral properties as does ginger. So cooking with, um, cooking with more of those foods, cooking with fresh herbs like parsley is very high. And it's just an example um, of, a, of an herb that's very high in, in vitamin C. Um, so those would probably be at the top of my list. Um, bone broth would be another good one. Uh, bone broth has a lot of vitamins and minerals in it and also helps keep our gut barrier healthy if it's tolerated. So yeah, that was a good question. All right. Well, if you do have any questions and want to email me, feel free to do that. Otherwise, thanks everybody for listening and I hope to see you in a few weeks.